Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome to Extra Gents Scents. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a fragrance from Gallagher Fragrances, newest release, Mists of Time. Sounds like it could be the title to an 80s swords and sandals flick. Beastmaster, Mists of Time. Yeah, it could work. I have not talked about a Gallagher Fragrances release in a while, it feels like. Probably a year or two. We will check out the presentation like always. I'll break this one down for you a little bit, let you know what I think about it. So let's jump into it and let's check out Mists of Time. I think every time that I say the name of the fragrance, I need to get a different kind of inflection going with my voice, a different accent. Let's check out the good old presentation. It's a 50 mil size bottle Eau de Parfum. So here we have the box. You have the name of the fragrance, some of the notes on the front there, as well as the Gallagher Fragrances logo, little GF up top. And on the sides, you have some shamrocks. On the back, you have the name of the house once again and the website. And on the bottom, you have your ingredient information. And here is the bottle. Got a nice plaque on the front with the name of the fragrance. Some of the notes, once again, same as on the front of the box there. And then you have a big honking cap with the name of the house. And that's pretty much it as far as the bottle goes. The cap slides snugly into place, look at that. It ain't going nowhere. Let's go ahead and blast out a couple sprays for you guys so you can check out the atomizer. There we go, pretty good, pretty strong. So this one was sent to me by Daniel Gallagher of Gallagher Fragrances, but it just showed up in my mailbox out of nowhere. He didn't even let me know it was coming. This is very random because I did not get some of the other fragrances that he's done. I think maybe he just thought I'd like this one or something, so he sent it on, I don't know. Like Behold Patchouli, uh, I know that one came out. I haven't smelled that fragrance uh, and I'm a big fan of patchouli. That being said, don't send it to me, don't do it. Actually, believe it or not, I'm not much of a fan of getting sent fragrances uh, by houses. Okay, so when I first saw the note breakdown on the front of the bottle here, candied orange, mandarin orange, black currant, patchouli, birch, and mineral notes, my uh, infantile brain immediately went to Creed's Aventus. <laughs> you know why? Because I saw black currant and birch. That's how friggin' Aventus has everything twisted up now. How many people have done their version of Aventus that you see two notes that are used in that fragrance and you automatically go, <laughs> wonder if it's Aventus. Pineapple in literally anything. Is that, is that, is that Aventus? That's honestly what it feels like. Uh, it's like I've been trained to think this way and I don't like it. Go away Aventus, stop it. But uh, no, no, no Aventus here thankfully so and this is also not the full note breakdown either. This is just like a selection of notes. So I have the full note breakdown here. I'll go ahead and rattle those off to you here. Bergamot, candied orange, mandarin, lime zest, black currant, patchouli, birch, Alaskan cypress, cedar, leather, tobacco, mineral notes, musk, and vanilla. So a little bit more going on than just uh, the six on the front of the box. And when you first spray this on, I'll tell you, Candied orange is right. It is sugary, sugary, sweet citrus. And that candied orange mixing with bergamot really is the main thing that I pick up there. Now I get the mandarin orange as well in the sense that there's sort of a green tinge around the edges of the fragrance in the opening, but there's so much of that sugary citrus that it overpowers a lot of that, that green feeling, that green nuance in the top. Quickly though, very quickly, that candied sugary part of the citrus burns away. It's almost like you uh, you flambéed it. Not in the sense that there is <laughs> a flambé what? So not flambéed in the sense that it smells like something is burning, not like that. But in the sense that it's there, that sugary, sugary citrus, and then whoosh, it kind of just goes up into the air and there it goes, it's gone. The heavily sugared part is gone, I should say. The sweetness from the citrus, it's still there. It's just, instead of being the focal point in your face, it starts to kind of step to the side and let other notes start working their way up. Like, yeah, working it up. So you start to get this kind of green grassiness that comes out. This green grassy feeling becomes much more prominent. Initially, that green feeling is on the edges. It's this nuance, but then once that 
that sugary feeling kind of starts to leave and the sweetness makes room. It becomes much grassier. And I gotta say, I love that. Big, big fan. The opening with the really sugary part, I'm not the biggest fan of. That heavily candied orange and bergamot opening. I don't hate it, but I'm not the biggest fan. It's, it's a little bit too, ugh, a little bit too in, in your face, you know? Some people are gonna love that a lot though. Some people are gonna love that that heavy handed sweetness in the opening there, but I'm kind of, mm. when that grassiness starts to come in, that, that green feeling starts to really flesh the fragrance out and fill it up, I'm here for that. Get maybe a little faint hint of tartness from the black currant, but it's not on the level of the citrus in the opening, at least for me. And then leather actually starts to come out, but it's not uh, heavy leather. It's not like a dark black leather or anything like that. Maybe even, maybe even slightly suede a little bit. And that grassiness, that green feeling kind of melds with the woodiness as the fragrance dries down. And that I enjoy a lot. And the woods become more and more prominent as the fragrance dries down. So they're gonna pick up the slack of anything else in the fragrance and kind of fill in the gaps with woods. As you work your way through the mid, that sweetness from the opening, it's still there, still on the periphery. You can pick it up. I mean, that lasts for quite a while, that citrus sweetness. It's just, as I've said a couple times now, the whole candied aspect, that dies away a lot earlier than the actual citrus themselves do. Once you hit the far dry down, pick up a little bit of minerality mixing together with the woodiness and maybe the faintest, faintest puff of vanilla. I never really pick up too much tobacco myself. Obviously not to say it's not in there. It's just, I don't seem to focus on that, concentrate on that. I pick up uh, between the tobacco and leather, more of the leather, and I pick up more of that heading through the mid. And that is not to say also, uh, just to be clear, that there's a whole lot of leather because there isn't. It's just more noticeable to me than the tobacco is. So overall, this one's a really nice wear, pretty easy to pull off. The opening is probably my least favorite part of the fragrance, but it segs really quickly into that greener mid that I like a lot. But as I said, I'm just being kind of a, an old fogey complaining about sweetness when I know a lot of people out there would say, no, that's the best part, man. I love sweetness. <laughs> Performance wise, it's pretty good. I mean, I've not been able to wear it enough out and about to say definitively like it lasts seven hours, 15 minutes and 32 seconds or anything like that. But it's good enough. I'm not gonna complain about it. The projection is pretty strong initially, especially when you got all those citruses pumping out. So it's gonna be pretty loud when you first spray it on, potentially cloying if you spray it on too heavily and it's like really hot and you go somewhere around a lot of people, but that's not a bad thing. The projection being good, I'd say above average, pretty pretty comfortably, especially for this type of scent. And then your longevity is good as well, above average also, so about what you'd expect. I mean, most Gallagher fragrances have pretty good performance. Really nice fragrance, very enjoyable. Cost is 115 bucks for a 50 mil, so it's not crazy expensive. Nation Indie fragrances can get pretty wild with their pricing, but this one's not too bad. And I've actually been thinking about wearing this one a lot more this summer, but I'm kind of waffling on it a little bit. I'm not sure if maybe it would pump a little too heavily or not, but I, I think I probably will go for this one this summer a little bit and kind of see how it works for me. So this one could be in my top 10 niche and indie fragrances this year. Kind of digging it. It's been growing on me. So there we go. Mistle time. I, I do dig the name. <laughs> uh, it's it's cool. Maybe it sounds like it should be a square soft role playing game from the SNES days. That'd be cool. All right, I am out of here. Thank you guys for hanging with me, and uh, I'll see you again another day with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.